party pack what's up it's your girl brandy and welcome or welcome back to my channel where we love to talk all things brats mga entertainment and so much more before we get started with today's video i wanted to give a special shout out to moses aka lmao it's coco on instagram he's responsible of this gorgeous illustration that you're viewing of me right now and as well as other fabulous black content creators that he is, has drawn in honor of black history month if you're not familiar with his page i definitely recommend you giving him a follow his link to his instagram is down below if you're not already please go support moses and his amazing instagram platform without further ado let's get started with today's video about tree change dolls let's get into it ah tree change dolls to know them is to well be terrified of them well that is if you're a doll collector but if you're not one and you're still confused as to what or why the purpose of these dolls are i think i may be able to be of some assistance Luckily, we have the amazing Sonia Sign to thank for these glorious tree change doll creations. And don't worry, I am being sarcastic. A once background hobby for the Australian mom turned to a full-time profession after sharing her recycled, repaired, and upscaled dolls to social media. Sonia's creations are highly known for their down-to-earth style artistry that created a huge sensation for many Karens, oh, I mean, many kids around the world. But unbeknownst to Sonia, her lovely creation created a pretty hefty debate on what is or isn't appropriate for kids to play with. Many suburban Karens, oh, oh my god, there goes that word again. I'm sorry, you guys. Many suburban parents were really feeling like brats were too sexy to play with for their kids, and they really did need this tree changed doll makeover. Noted in an article conducted by Pop Sugar, the before and after of these tree changed dolls were definitely captivating. But again, it did spark the debate of the hypersexualization of brats' dolls and if they were appropriate to play with for young girls. Although beauty is certainly in the eye of the beholder, were brats actually setting an unrealistic beauty standard for young girls? Well, I think the answer to this lies into who the brats were actually made for, and essentially who their target audience is. So, let's find out. So as far as public information goes, when brats were created, they were developed for tween girls from the ages of 10 to 12. Noted in many interviews and court documents, MGA's CEO, Isaac Larian, explained that brats is an urban doll, expressing further that, that African Americans, Middle Eastern, and Hispanic young girls will want to see a doll that represents them within the product scape of doll lines. I don't think uh, an African American girl or a Middle Eastern ethnic background girl or a Latin girl wants to buy necessarily a blonde doll. I think they want to buy something that basically resembles who they are. Although the Bratz target audience ages has shifted over the years due to the demographic growing older, the Bratz mission statement has remained the same to empower girls by helping them to gain the necessary skills through education, training, mentorship, to become confident, strong, and smart. So how does this positive message translate to sexualization of dolls in a negative beauty standard? Now, if I'm not mistaken, the doll market is heavily saturated with collections and lines that are targeted towards young girls and tweens and are dressed quote-unquote appropriately. So why are brats to blame? Are brats too sexy? Well, the answer to this question is merely subjective, but the statement itself to specify what is and what isn't sexy is definitely rooted in misogyny, especially when the parameters of this standard is justified within someone wearing too much makeup or a quote-unquote provocative outfit. Now, contrary to popular belief, I can't agree with some of the parents' sentiments of enjoying the tree change doll's transformations. I can understand that they like to see representation of their young girl from the ages of 10 to 12 years old. But as of recently, the doll market has been incredibly saturated with numerous amounts of doll lines that represent that demographic and cater to that audience. Now for a moment, let's speak to the perspective of the Karens, oh, excuse me, I mean parents' perspective, rooted in misogyny that brats look like whores and that they look like sluts. Unfortunately, I believe that many parents may come to this conclusion that brats wearing a certain amount of makeup or an expressive outfit choice is them wearing it for or by the attention of men. Which, I don't know about you, but who's doing that? If you are, more power to you, but to demonize someone wearing makeup over someone not wearing makeup, I believe, is rooted in misogyny. If you know anything about the brats or their entire mission state, they are always here to empower and to show independence for young tweens and teenagers across the globe. They're nobody's girl. Chloe, isn't this better than studying with Cameron? 
Cameron who? <laughs> and at the end of the day, it's the individual's choice whether they want to wear makeup or whether they don't want to wear makeup. To say someone is wearing too much makeup or their outfit is too revealing is reducing them to a mere object of choice. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but it doesn't seem like rock and science to respect someone whether they are or aren't wearing a certain amount of makeup or any makeup at all. But as we continue through society, it seems as though the more makeup you wear, the less human you seem to some pea brain men and women in the world. But hey, maybe she's born with it, maybe it's the patriarchy. And to you tree change apologists out there who want to defend Sonia to the neck and bone of every conversation we have about tree change dolls, critically thinking and analyzing a topic is not someone sending hate. But I did want to ask you, do you even know what you're defending? Because many Bratz lovers and doll community members alike are bringing up valid points to this argument and it wouldn't hurt to listen. In fact, I highly encourage any and everyone to highly think about and critique the content that they consume on a daily basis. And if you're not doing that, that's slightly concerning. I actually don't have any mal or malicious intent with this video, and I definitely agree with Sonia that she definitely did not intend to make a huge statement with these dolls. She said it herself. But although it wasn't her intention, I do think it is important to acknowledge the privilege within her unawareness of the impact that her creations would make on society. Intentionality with artistry is incredibly important. Although art can be merely subjective, it can also affect millions of people. So it is important to keep that in mind when creating a work of art. Now, I'm mentioning this for two reasons. One, many Bratz lovers and doll collectors who admire Bratz dolls feel as though the tree change transformations degrades the value of the Bratz dolls, and that some individuals want to buy Bratz as they are. The market of secondhand doll buying has been pretty steep within the past five years. Many Bratz dolls can be hard to come by, especially the, the highly sought after Felicia, as she's done many transformations on. Now, I'm about to touch on a point that I haven't seen many people talk about within their videos about tree change dolls, but it's still a valid point to examine. Now, with many of Sonia's tree change transformation dolls, I've noticed something pretty interesting. With many of her people of color dolls, including Yasmin, Jade, Sasha, and Felicia's, she strips them of their ethnic features and gives them Eurocentric ones. And every time that I bring this up, people are so confused. Like, it's such a big concept to grasp. I'm not going to go into a debate of what is and what isn't a Eurocentric feature, or how European beauty standards have been the baseline for our society for decades. Because I'm not going to continue to explain basic information, okay? And it's concerning that you are however old you are, and you're trying to insert yourself in this conversation and you don't know what that is. So before you comment, just look that up, educate, and then come back and then really just think about what you want to say. But as I was saying, with many of Sonia's tree change transformations, she strips, for example, Jade of her monolid that is synonymous with her ethnicity, seemingly strips her of that and replaces it with Eurocentric beauty features, which are the double eyelids. Another example of this can be found within the black and brown dolls with Yasmin and with Sasha and Felicia transformations that she does. She strips them of their larger lips and eye shapes and replaces them again with European beauty features. Now, if you cannot see that, I definitely advise you to get some glasses or get your eyes checked because the evidence is there. And a lot of people think, oh, well, brats have universal looking faces. And yes, for the most part, all brats do look alike. Although hyper-realistic, the Bratz Features creations stem from real ethnicities and real individuals that are in society. Isaac Larian has said it himself in multiple interviews that Bratz is an urban doll. Not all of his doll lines are made for the blonde hair and blue eyed. He believed that Middle Eastern girls, black girls, women of color would purchase his dolls and see themselves within his creations. So to completely disregard people of color's influence on the brand is completely dense. I want to say borderline idiotic, but hey, I, I don't want to be rude. Although the Bratz features are very hyper-realistic and they don't necessarily look like a quote-unquote real person, the blueprint for which they were created 
is still real and they got it from somewhere like they did not just pull it out of thin air they didn't pull out of their ass and think oh let me just put a big lipped um monolid person up and call it a day no they definitely saw someone within society they took that and they used that as inspiration for their brand and I don't think a lot of people necessarily know where the Bratz features necessarily come from and of course everything isn't about race honey nobody said that it was please save your gaslighting and oh you're reading too into it statements to someone who cares because I personally do not care for it no one's saying that she means any harm by these things or that she's intentionally doing something or not I am saying that it's damaging to completely disregard regard the features that are synonymous with an ethnicity entirely because it's blatantly saying without saying that I don't see you and I don't care what you represent or what features that you may have. This is why I said previously that intentionality, no matter whatever artistry you are doing, is important because I do believe that these transformations can be damaging to people of color in general. You're missing out on an entire group of individuals' ethnic features when you decide to not incorporate that within your transformations. So that leaves us with the million dollar question. Where do we draw the line between artistry and ethnic feature erasure and misogyny? A big resolution for clarity in this area can be intentionality, especially when it comes to representing certain ethnic groups that are in society. Without clear intention and direction, certain representation of features can blindly become overlooked. Now, at the end of the day, Sonia can do whatever she wants with the dolls that she finds. Although artistry can be subjective, when it comes to representing ethnic and urban communities, integrity is vital or don't do it at all. An example of this can be found with the recent trend and obsession by, may I say, certain palm colored members of the doll community have had this recent trend and obsession of making their dolls as black as possible and it turning into a fetishization frenzy of dark skin characters. I'm not saying that repainting or recoloring your dolls is a bad thing, but but these creations have turned into a slight minstrel show and again if you're not familiar with what that is I highly advise you educating yourself on how damaging that can be to the black community but there's thousands upon thousands of YouTube videos that have researched this within cartoons and within television networks for centuries. But to conclude these are not just skin colors these are not just features these are connected to real communities and real people and experiences that need to be done with integrity or again not be done at all. So that concludes today's video, but of course I want to know your thoughts in the comments below. Are Karens that denounce brats actually secret misogynists? I'm sure you could already guess the thoughts on this question based off of my video, but I'd love to know yours. And have you also seen the point of ethnic feature erasure for tree change dolls within this conversation? Please let me know in the comments. Now again, I just want to reiterate that this video is in no way to show any hate to Sonia or the tree change doll movement. This video is just to create a collective conversation amongst brats lovers and doll community members of the collective influence that tree change dolls has had on society so let's have a healthy discussion down in the comments below let's keep it civil as always thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you all in my next video brad's party pack bye yeah, so how you feel.